It's the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for Tuesday, the 5th of September. I'm Michael Groff. Yesterday in the Valley, a sticky 104 degrees for our afternoon high. Very tropical out there. Today, very similar. We did have some blowing dust in the North and East Valley last night, but no precipitation. And unfortunately, a very low-grade monsoon and very slight chances of precip will be with us for the next couple of days. A possible upswing in shower and thunderstorm activity comes our way this weekend. Plus, all eyes in the weather world are on Irma, so there's a lot of questions surrounding that. Let's get out there and talk about it this morning. As we look outside at 8.30 a.m., mostly sunny skies in the valley right now, 90 degrees at Sky Harbor, dew points at 63, humidity 41 percent, light wind, and the barometer is rising. Temperatures across the area this morning, most of us are in the 80s at this hour. The water vapor satellite shows high pressure to the north of the state. The remnant circulation of Lydia now moving up toward the central California coast or just off the coast there. Here's the watch warning map still. Most of the action in the Pacific Northwest with wildfires, excessive fire danger, red flag warnings, and heat has been the big story for the last couple of weeks. On the convective outlook, a slight risk of severe storms today from around Philadelphia up toward Manchester. The marginal risk goes from the Arklatex all the way up to the Canadian border. And here's the latest on Irma. This is a GOES-16 satellite view, and man, what an impressive storm this is. Uh, very, uh, perfectly symmetrical, really. And the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center, maximum sustained winds 180 miles per hour, obviously a Category 5. And the official track from the Hurricane Center now takes it through the Leeward Islands, um, just skirting Puerto Rico. And then north of uh, Hispaniola, ultimately putting it in the Florida Straits by Sunday morning. Now, obviously, this can change, especially as we get out there. The cone of uncertainty, the error rate increases with time. But the Hurricane Center forecast track has remained pretty consistent. Now, there is a turn toward the north or the right expected with this ultimately. But where and when that occurs, still up in the air somewhat. Here's the latest modeling on this. This is the GFS Ensemble. There's 21 members here. The Ensemble mean represented by the black squares. Again, pretty much follows the Hurricane Center track, except it turns it very sharply to the right just about the time it gets to Miami and then moves it up the Florida East Coast, making another landfall right there into South Carolina, somewhere between Charleston and Myrtle Beach. Checking the European Ensemble, 51 members here, and the Ensemble mean, unfortunately, is further to the west or to the left on Irma with this run, the uh, OZ set, and that takes it right up the Florida Peninsula, and that is obviously the worst case scenario. Now, some of the models actually bring it out into the Gulf. A few of them bring it up toward the Carolinas. A couple of them curve it out to sea. Those appear to be outliers at this point. But we just don't know. It is still early in the game, and this track can and likely will change in coming days as the hurricane hunters go in there and we collect more data, and that helps to sharpen up the models. But obviously, all eyes from Miami all the way up to Moorhead City, Hilton Head, Wilmington, North Carolina need to be watching this thing very, very carefully. And we'll talk about it more as we go through some of the deterministic runs as well. This is the GFS, the 06Z run valid at 5 o'clock Mountain Standard Time today. High pressure north of the state, the remnant circulation of Lydia off the central California coast. Easterly flow around here, normally that would help to enhance shower and thunderstorm activity, or at least the chances thereof here in the deserts. But even though we have a short wave that was slated to move through, it looks like that is phasing out. And only a very small chance of showers and storms and the best concentration of rain today will be across northern Arizona, maybe up into the northwest part of the state. Still, we'll call for a 10% chance of showers and storms in the valley, maybe some blowing dust, some strong gusty winds. Highs this afternoon, 103 to 106. Checking the high-res models, here's the HRRR tonight at 10 o'clock. It does show a few showers and storms trying to get in here from the northeast, but I just don't know if that's going to happen. Um, it just doesn't look very favorable for any significant or widespread storms to develop tonight. So just isolated showers and storms. Somebody might get some rain uh, a mile away. You get nothing, just some wind. And that's the way that these storms are going to be tonight. The NAM, same time tonight at 10 o'clock, shows almost nothing. And the atmospheric instability, the CAPE values tonight, not all that impressive here across south central Arizona. There's some, a few hundred joules, a thousand joules per kilogram. And, of course, there's much higher values across northwest Mexico, more than 3,000 joules per kilogram down there. But uh, just 
Not a whole lot for us tonight in terms of instability, and the upper support just does not favor it, and anything that we do see would likely just result in strong gusty winds, maybe some blowing dust. Tomorrow, kind of the same scenario, partly cloudy skies, highs 103 to 106, but just only a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms. Thursday, kind of the same thing, although we start to see the winds veering toward the south as troughing begins to set up along the west coast. And again, the GFS is even starting to close off a low by later this week and this weekend. So we'll still call for a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms here on Thursday. Highs 102 to 106. Friday, the GFS advertising a much more significant increase in moisture and shower and thunderstorm chances as we see interaction uh, of that trough to our west. So I'll go with a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms Friday and Saturday as we see more cloud cover, higher humidity levels, and the better chances of rain. And you see on Saturday evening, we've got Irma down there just to the south, southeast of Miami. Looking a little bit closer at that in just a second. Here's Sunday and Irma moving up the east coast of Florida. But let's show you that this is the GFS. 2 a.m. Monday morning, September the 11th, and it's got Irma somewhere east-southeast of Orlando at that point and moving up the Florida east coast. But again, this is just one deterministic run. So would still be bad news for Miami, Daytona Beach, West Palm Beach, Orlando, but slightly better news for the west coast of Florida, Fort Myers to Tampa Bay. You'd still get some rain and you'd still have some wind with this, but it would certainly not be nearly the problem that the European scenario is. And let's show you that right now. Speaking of, here's the European on Sunday morning at 2 a.m. Eastern time. It's got the storm somewhere over Cuba by 8 o'clock Sunday night. It's got the storm over the Florida Keys and I think that pressure is probably a little bit too low with the system, but still, it would be a hurricane at that point. And then, this is Monday afternoon, September 11th, 2 o'clock Eastern Time. The European has the storm center just east of Tampa Bay. And again, that would be really bad news for much of the Florida Peninsula, especially anywhere along and east of the eye, because that's where you have positive vorticity. That's where you have the really bad stuff, not just the strongest winds, but of course the possibility of tornadoes and heavy, heavy torrential rain. Now, everyone saw Harvey. This storm is not going to put down the kind of rain that Harvey did because it'll be moving much faster. Uh, this is Monday evening off of the GFS once again, and it's got the storm now moving up into the Carolinas. Just a very Interesting situation and one, again, that we'll just have to watch very carefully moving forward. Let's go to a week from today. This is Tuesday, the 12th of September. We've got high pressure just sitting almost right on top of us here in the southwest. This would be a drier scenario, despite the fact that we have an upper low cut off off the central and northern California coast. It does not look like we would be affected by that in any meaningful way. High temperatures above normal, 103 to 107. Really about the same thing on Wednesday the 13th. And here's the end of the forecast period. This is Thursday the 14th of September. And we'd still be looking relatively dry with southwesterly flow. This upper low deepens off the central California coast. That's a very interesting scenario. But you know my rule on forecasting closed lows more than a week out. Just don't do it. Don't buy into it. Checking the temperatures coming off of the GFS ensemble through the period. We're going to keep it above normal today, tomorrow even into Thursday, and then cooling it off this weekend with the added moisture and chances of storms, and then warming it back up for next week. But indications are that by the middle and latter part of September, we're going to see temperatures coming down, which would be climatologically normal for this point in the season. And that's going to do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. My next video comes back here tomorrow morning. Thanks as always so much for watching. Really do appreciate it if you like our videos. Well, you can click like, and of course, you can also subscribe to us so that whenever we post a brand new one, you'll get the notifications. Be safe, stay cool out there, have a great Tuesday.